Good morning. Welcome to St. Richard's Episcopal Church on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Our service is fully contained in the bulletin that is posted on our Facebook page and that everyone in the church has in their hands. The flowers this morning are dedicated, of course, to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for Justin and Carmen Graham's anniversary. I'm guessing it's number seven, Carmen and Justin. It might be eight. They renewed their vows uh, several years ago after joining St. Richard's. Happy anniversary, Justin and Carmen. We are uh, honored to have you as part of St. Richard's Church. Our opening hymn is, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending, and because they can see you, congregation at St. Richard's, please stand. his name I just came to love the Lord I just came to praise his name I just came to praise the Lord I just came to praise his name I just came to praise the Lord The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as this week on uh, Wednesday is Veterans Day, we honor all of those who have served our nation in the armed forces, and we pray the call it for the nation from the Book of Common Prayer. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her, one who rises early to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths, and meet them in every thought. Thus ends the reading.
Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver me. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and all together dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them, to meet with the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Be Our sequence hymn is found on page seven of your service bulletin, Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Please stand.
The Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the bride, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. If we just had the gospel lesson for today in our service of Holy Eucharist, the sermon would be very short. Keep awake, don't be foolish, bring enough oil so you don't get shut out of the banquet. End of story. We take the literal reading of that parable at the end here of the Gospel of Matthew. But thankfully, here at St. Richard's, we read four pieces of scripture every week. And this week, our first reading is from wisdom. And it is indeed wisdom. That is what it takes to know the bridegroom. The bridegroom who is God, as described in our gospel lesson today. Wisdom is what it takes to recognize the one who is called Lord. Wisdom is what it takes to be ready when God comes to bring heaven and earth together on that great and glorious day when we are delivered from sin and death and we will all live in perfect unity with those who are alive now and those who have gone before. Wisdom. Not knowledge. Not facts. Wisdom. It's something different. Wisdom is. Wisdom is something that you can't find in a Google search, because I've tried. I wish it was there. But wisdom is something that involves both your head and your heart. Wisdom is something that involves your sense of self 
and your sense of belonging for a larger, wider local community, regional community, and now global community. Wisdom looks behind to the past. Wisdom looks before to the future. And wisdom lands right here in the present. I recently read a book called Sisters in Law. It's about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sandra Day O'Connor, the first two women who sat on the Supreme Court. It was a dense book, and it had a lot of case law in it. And I realized about halfway through the book that I actually didn't have to keep the case law straight. Thank God, because I was really struggling uh, to figure out which case they were talking about over the course of uh, both Ginsburg's career and uh, O'Connor's career. All I had to do was catch on that the decisions that both Ginsburg and O'Connor made, both as Supreme Court justices and in their other roles before they sat on the Supreme Court, all of their decisions built on one another and ultimately led to more equality, more fairness, and more good decisions. The individual cases didn't always seem like the outcome was right or good or fair or equitable at the time. They didn't always seem like they were gonna lead us to a better future, but they did because they set precedent and they were the blocks, the building blocks to what the Supreme Court would ultimately have to rule in favor of more equality, more equity here in our country. They had wisdom and it came from their guts. It came from their collaboration with each other, with their clerks and with other people in the community. Wisdom came from their sense of what the future should be and their examination of the past and what would work in our present. It was really a remarkable, a remarkable uh, awa awakening for me to realize how prophetic our judicial system can be. So when we consider the gospel for today, it might be very easy for us to interpret it as, as Jesus saying, keep awake and be prepared, and when the day comes, don't share what you have with those who are not prepared. Then the unprepared will be shut out, and you will be in with the Lord, the bridegroom, and we'll have a great, beautiful feast. That would be a fair reading of the text, wouldn't you say? However, when we tap into wisdom and find wisdom sitting at the gate, wisdom says, look, harder, deeper, feel what you feel, and then read it again. So what would wisdom say about this parable? Exactly that. This is a parable. It is meant to teach a general principle. It is not an actual story about ten bridesmaids, five who are wise, five who are foolish. And the interesting thing to note about the ten bridesmaids is, while there were five who were wise and five who were foolish, they were all going to meet the bridegroom. They all knew that it was important to be there. Not only that, they all get sleepy. The only difference between them is five had more oil than the other five, right? So let's look behind at who Jesus has been in the gospel according to Matthew. Just last week, we went all the way back to chapter 5 of Matthew. Remember, we're in 25 now. We go all the way back to All Saints Sunday and chapter 5 of Matthew's gospel. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Remember the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who mourn. Jesus comes for all people, no matter their condition. Not just the wise, but the poor, the meek, the foolish indeed, and everyone in between. That's what the Gospel of Matthew has taught us. Jesus comes so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. When you look at this parable through wisdom's eyes, then it really doesn't make sense that the wise bridesmaids would not share their oil with the foolish, or that the Lord would shut the door on those who seek him. 
I almost think that Jesus used parables like this, especially at the end of his ministry, when he's anticipating his arrest, his betrayal, when he's anticipating his, his death, that he wants to shake the disciples and say, wake up, what is it going to take for you to remember that you've got to be prepared? What about if you get, sh- you might get shot out of the banquet. Does that work for you? I might not recognize you when you come. So wake up, be prepared, stay awake. I often wonder if that wasn't Jesus' aim in these later parables, just to shake them, to wake them up, to have them engage more fully, be aware. So what is the wisdom in the parable? Tap into your heart, tap into your mind, and look around you. Look at our salvation history This world has been created beautiful. You are beautiful. You are wonderfully made. God's people have known love and peace, and God's people have known strife and exile. You have known love and peace. And I would I would say it's fair, I would say it is fair to say that we all want to avoid conflict and pain. But you've seen miracles, miracles that point you clearly to a loving God. And I say that with with, um, some authority, knowing that you come to St. Richard's, that you attend our online worship. You've seen miracles, and they clearly point you to a loving God. So today, as we look toward toward tomorrow, as we wait patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and the banquet that we know God has planned for the life of the world, the wisdom is to keep awake and be ready. Remember, our day-to-day decision-making as Christians, like Ginsburg's and O'Connor's day-to-day decision-making as lawyers and justices, our day-to-day decision-making as Christians are important if we're going to change hearts and minds and shape our communities to be more loving, inclusive, and generous, so that everyone knows that the Lord is coming. Indeed, the day of the Lord is already here in the love we show to each other. The party is being planned, and no one has to be left out if the wise encourage the foolish. And then all at once, all together, we are all wise. Day to day, we need to decide to help the foolish be prepared. Don't you love how I just assume that we're all wise? I just assume that. Day to day, we need to help the foolish be prepared, but also day to day, we need to recognize our own foolishness and transform our foolishness into wisdom, into inclusion, into love and grace. Please tell me if you think I'm being foolish, and I promise I will tell you too, and together we will be prepared and welcomed into the banquet that God has prepared for us all. We're constantly learning how to come into right relationship with God and with each other, constantly checking our lamps to see if we have enough oil, constantly looking at our past. That's what we do when we read our scriptures, looking at our past and looking forward to our future to inform how we live our lives today. That is wisdom. Paul spoke with wisdom to the Thessalonians. That's our second lesson for today. The Thessalonians were very concerned about the mechanics of what happened to those who had died before the coming of the Lord. Remember, Jesus promised, I won't lose any one of you before I come again. Then people started to die. They didn't know what that meant. Where did they go? What would happen to their souls? God being present, they were were concerned what was going to happen when finally Christ came again, when God was present again in the world. That heaven, that great and glorious day when heaven and earth come together and the banquet is ready and presented to the world. Read this portion of 1 Thessalonians, literally. And when you hear uh, the sound of a trumpet out there somewhere, get ready 
to fly up into the air. That's what you, how you could read it. That's how we could take it. Read this portion of 1 Thessalonians, however, with wisdom. Read it with the eyes of your head and the eyes of your heart, and you will know that there is simply nothing to worry about. That's Paul's message to the Thessalonians. There's nothing to worry about, for if we die, we die in the Lord. And if we live, we live in the Lord. So whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. We belong to the Lord. We know the Lord through wisdom and through understanding. So keep awake. Keep awake. That is the message. We are children and heirs of eternal life. Let us today and tomorrow help everyone. Be as wise as we can be and rest in the radiant and unfading embrace of the wisdom of our Lord. Amen. And now, standing as you're able... Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 8 of your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 4, can be found on page 9 of your bulletin and page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those celebrating birthdays, Mary Sue Robinson, Art Penny, Ralph Zaworski, Ruth Wiley, Barb Nixon, Susan, Hannah, Janet Thrain. Lord, in your mercy, 
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. And bring them the joy of your salvation. For the special needs of this congregation, we pray for Sheila, Alex, Kay, Larry, Sandy, Hector, Maggie, Val, Meredith, Ray, Ted, Hazel, Stan, and Ginny, and for family and friends, Suzanne, Rose, Pat, the Don Donahue family, Sheila, Naomi, Marty, Bridget Ann, Christy, Ruperto, Neil and Andrew's mom, Helen, Chuck, Hector, Alma, Don, Sarah, Maureen, Sarah, Emma, Rachel, and Bill. And we pray especially for teachers, first responders, our military personnel, healthcare workers, and others that we name. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that you may be that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. I beg your prayers especially today for the Reverend Grayson Garvin, who died on Friday night. Grayson was in the 80s and early 90s director here at St. Richard's and was very kind to me when I started here. He uh, lived in South Florida and will keep you posted on any arrangements that may be being made for Grayson. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them, and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace to um, our 25 or so folks who are here in person, and God's peace to all of you watching us live on Facebook or later uh, today or anytime. God's peace be with you. The announcements follow the closing hymn, so I encourage you to stick around for the announcements uh, <clears throat> right after the closing hymn. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Zion hears the watchman's voices with gladness all our heart rejoices she Taste the joys beyond Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the prayer book and on page 11 of your service bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image, 
and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, God, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Let 
yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human rest, in the body and the to all the faithful, his own self for heavenly food. Rank on rank the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way. As the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day, that the powers of hell may vanish as the darkness clears away. At his feet the six-winged seraph, cherubim with sleep, Bless I, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, Not sing that one. Thank you, Dr. Marlsby. Our post communion prayer is on page 365 of your prayer books and in your service bulletins on page 13. Kneeling or standing as you wish, let us pray and give thanks together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates, on page 14 of your service bulletin, and stick around for a few announcements after the hymn. up your heads, ye mighty gates, behold the King of glory waits. The King of peace is drawing near, the 
Savior of the Lord is here. Bless the land, the city blessed, where Christ the ruler is confessed. Oh, happy hearts and happy homes to whom this King of triumph comes. Fling wide the portals of your heart, make it a temple set apart from earthly for hands employ are stoned with prayer and love and joy. Redeemer, come, I open wide my heart to thee, here, Lord, abide. Let me thy the presence feel thy grace and love in me reveal. So come my sovereign enter let no and nobler life begin. Thy Holy Spirit guide us on until the glorious crown be won. Another, another great one. You can't help but, but sing. Again, welcome to St. Richard's Episcopal Church here in Winter Park, Florida. I'm going to ask that Victoria, our able um, Eucharistic minister, get ready and get her cross for our procession out on the uh, procession out uh, uh, piece of music that Carl Maltzby, our director of music, has prepared. And Rich Wilson, get ready to be Vanna White behind me. I realize maybe Vanna White's lost on some of us. Wheel of Fortune... She still looks super great. I think she's 110 years old, but she still looks super great. Anyway, I think it's ABC. ABC? Anyway, you're better looking than Vanna White any day. Mm. Yes, right. A bit of an update on our um, last. This is it. We will only give you updates anymore about our Pledge Drive campaign here for 2021. As of Thursday, November 5th, we have... 32 pledges received. That's about a third of the pledges we received in 2020. And that total is $91,000, almost 92. And we continue to ask for a pledge for our roof. And that total is almost $6,000. And um, I thank you so much for everybody who has stepped up with a pledge this year. And if you haven't received a pledge card, you can make your pledge online at www.strichards.org or um, call the church office. We'll send you a pledge card. I'll drive you a pledge card to your house if you want and put my mask on and hand it to you with tongs. Whatever it needs, whatever it takes to have you make a pledge, we would really appreciate that as we gauge what 2021 is to bring for St. Richard's Episcopal Church. If you can complete, we ask for $20 a month for the roof pledge. It's about $260. You can always do more. You can always do more. But if that $260 is available to you in December of 2020 for 2021, if you make that um, entire payment in 2020, we can then in 2021 make a principal payment on our roof loan, which is going to be six years old in 2021. We are, almost, we are almost done with the 15-year with the mortgage because you have been so generous about um, pledging towards the cost of the roof that was replaced in 2015 and making early payments so that we can pay down the principal and pay Commerce National Bank a lot less interest. So 
If you want more information about uh, paying down the principal, give me a call, and we will talk to you all about what happens with that roof loan, which we're almost done with, thanks to you. Yesterday, Rich Wilson, who's our deacon, and I had the pleasure of greeting super warmly Tom Griffin, who, with his wife Nancy, were founding members of St. Richard's Episcopal Church. On the Articles of Incorporation, Tom Griffin's name is, the, is signed as the treasurer of St. Richard's Episcopal Church when we were founded about 65 years ago. Nancy, his wife, at 95, died April 30th. And given the pandemic situation, we haven't known what to do. So the family finally decided we would put her in her resting place here in our memorial garden, which they helped to create here at St. Richard's, which is pretty amazing. And um, Tom came over for her interment with about uh, 15 of their family members yesterday. And I had them keep our, this poster board that we're going to show the in-person congregation and hope, hopefully our um, crew can get you an image of. So this is the poster board they made of Nancy's life. She's beautiful. And we'll put that at the door for everybody who's here in person to look at. Nancy was probably one of the most amazing and peaceful people I could um, hope to know. And Tom, uh, it was so amazing to see you, and I know you're watching the live stream here with your feet almost on the ground back in the place, in, in, in the home that you have prepared for the rest of us to partake in now. And I have to tell you that as we were in our memorial garden yesterday at 4 p.m., and the wind was blowing. It was blustery afternoon. We had just, it was just before we started the service. And, and people who I was watching were pointing into the trees that are beyond our memorial garden. We have several huge pine trees there. And in the very top of one of the pine trees, not as, uh, occluded by any other branches, was this gigantic, the biggest bald eagle I've ever seen because it was like we had a camera and we could zoom in on it. It was huge. That bald eagle sat there for the duration of the about 25 minute interment. And it was fantastic. And as Nancy Griffin, again, she was 95 when she died in April, grew older, she got more and more bent over because she had to use this walker. But as that eagle um, illustrated for all of us, in God's kingdom, Nancy is fully, fully, uh, as, she, as she is meant to be in God's kingdom, upright and, and majestic, as she was in, um, in life. So I'm so grateful to Tom Griffin and family. Thank you all for blessing us with a beautiful day yesterday. And Nancy, uh, the uh, founding member after my own heart, we can tell you more about her. Anybody can tell you more about her who knew her. The Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.